guys, it's Elizabeth. Welcome back to Madero Vlog Moments. Today I'm going to share with you how to choose the right cruise cabin for you. So I post here every Monday and Wednesday all about vacation, travel, vlogs, and um, I share about health and wellness on a separate channel. So if you want to check that out, I'll have it linked below. But today we're going to talk about how to choose the right cruise cabin. Now there are many subcategories within these. Please, if you have cruised before, share your tips and suggestions in the comments down below. I love hearing your tips and I know they help a lot of viewers as well. So there are four main types of cabins. Again, there's a lot more within each one, but these are the four main ones. The very first one is an inside cabin. It's usually the smallest, has no window to the outside, um, and they're usually the least expensive. But if you're looking for a least expensive cabin, that's the way to go. <laughs> the next one is an ocean view. That is the type of cabin that our family typically goes for. We just wanna see where we're going. It's a room with a window or a porthole round window and it just gives you access to knowing if it's day or night and if you've arrived at your destination. It just helps me to know where we are. Especially if the, rip, the cruise ship is moving a lot, you can kind of tell what's happening. The third one is a balcony. So it can also be called a veranda and it allows you to step outside without going to public decks. This is really nice if you can splurge and afford it. Sometimes it's not that much more for a balcony from an ocean view. You can find great deals depending on the time of year you're going. Sometimes it can be a lot more and it's not a good value. So just make sure you're checking that. And the last one, which is a suite, it's a larger cabin and it often has separate sleeping and living areas and has a wide variety of amenities and perks like boarding the vessel early, uh, being part of separate little parties. There's all kinds of things that they offer. So there are things to consider. I have seven tips with that. So number one, when choosing your cruise cabin, stability. Do you get seasick? Think low midship. The front, front and back can be a bit rocky. So number two, the distance near specific areas. So look at what part of the ship you're on and then what do you want to have access to? Typically on the cruise ships that we've been on, the Lido, which has the, um, the quick service buffet, is usually at the back of the ship. Not every cruise, but most of them we've done. So we like to cruise at the back of the ship so it's less walking back and forth because we're going to that Lido three times a day with our little kiddos. And also the water slides are at the back, typically. You have to check your ship's layout. So we like to get a uh, room that's near those. All right, the other thing to consider is noise. So number three, pay attention to what's right above your cabin and what's below your cabin. You can check this out on the Shipmate app. You can download it and then check out your cruise. And just be aware, you might not want to pick a cabin if it's cheaper just because um, it's cheaper. And then when you look at it and find out that there's like a dance hall right above your room, it might be a little bit noisier or being right near a boiler room or something like that, or even near the elevators because you have lots of traffic coming through. So just things to consider. Number four, the cabin size, check the square footage of the room. Not all cruise cabins are equal. Each cabin is different. Some lines, it's actually smaller than others. It just depends. So make sure you check out the square footage. And then if you add that balcony, it gives you a little bit more room. Number five, some windows have obstructed views. So just keep that in mind. One time we booked, I think it was on Royal Caribbean and we got connecting rooms. Uh, the kids were in one room and we were in another and it was an obstructed view. And we thought, well, we'll be fine when we booked it. We'll still be able to see out. <laughs> Those lifeboats were blocking the whole thing. We might as well have gotten an inside cabin. You could barely tell if it was day or night. We were like <laughs> way down there trying to see. We couldn't even see the water and um, it just wasn't worth it for the cost. It really wasn't. All right, so number six, some inside Royal Caribbean cabins have a window um, that overlook the promenade deck. So even though it's an inside cabin, you have a window that overlooks this walkway of shops and restaurants, so you can still get a sense of whether it's day or night, but you're overlooking not the coveted water view, but a walkway. And those are, I think they're more expensive than an inside cabin, but cheaper than an ocean view. So that's something to consider. 
And then number seven, we have done this before and you can book a guarantee cabin and it's guaranteed to be an ocean or no, it's guaranteed that you are booking a cabin, but you don't get to pick where and what type of cabin. And so we ended up thinking we were guaranteed an ocean view. We just didn't know where it was going to be. And they bumped us up to a balcony. So that was a great value. It was one of those last minute types of cruises. Let us know in the comments below if you have any other tips or suggestions about choosing the right cabin for you. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, to see more videos like this one, and I'll see you next week. Thanks guys for watching, bye.